Today we are going to talk about energy expenditure versus reward when it comes to the dry washer and the crusher. A whole bunch of my recent videos have focused on going over dry washer tailings. And if you don't know, the dry washer is a machine that separates gold or heavy things from soil without the use of water. It uses vibration and air pressure instead. It's not 100% accurate. This probably has on a good day with everything set up right, a 90% recovery rate. So if it goes through the main feed box here, 90% of the gold that goes through it will catch. Technically speaking, the biggest losses happen in the oversize. So anything that doesn't fit through these grizzly bars here falls off the back in a big pile where this tub of water is. And there is gold stuck in those dirt pumps, just exactly the same as it would be if I had a high banker set up like this one here, and I had clay balls roll off the back, or in fact, clay balls that slip through the grizzly bars and roll down the run. You are always gonna have loss, no matter what machine you use. The biggest problem is that those clay balls are very difficult to break up, like extremely difficult. You gotta remember, that there's a factor of effort that's involved. I've had to transport all of the equipment, which is considerable, out into the bush. And yes, ATVs and all that sort of crap are not very usable here in Australia because of licensing reasons. So there's no real efficient way outside of manhandling it with like a wheelbarrow or a cart to your location. So that's the first one. Then you've got to set it all up and make sure that it is set up correctly. Then we have to extract all the dirt in 30 or 40 degree heat. Sure, we could do it at night time, but then we have to contend with the snakes and the spiders and the mosquitoes. And I've already caught one mosquito borne virus in the last 12 months. So, so, what are we gonna do about clay clumps? I don't know why I got the camera around this way. That was a mistake. This is what happens when you film in one shot. So, a lot of people have suggested, oh, an easy way of breaking those clay clumps up would be to take the RC1 out there and use that to break up those clumps. But that means I've got to take the RC1 out there. That thing weighs 20 plus kilos. It is a heavy piece of equipment to drag out there. And I also have to classify those clumps down to one inch so they fit into the feed tube. Straight away, we've got that bottleneck. I know that hole looks bigger than one inch here, but it's actually the hole, the hole down in there and the outlet port is only about one, one and a half inches. And we don't want jams, because if we have jams in that, then that's a whole other kettle of fish to be dealing with in 40 degree heat. And I can only do one bucket at a time, unless I somehow figure out how to suspend a 20 kilo unit above a dry washer. Now, I am not poo-pooing. <laughs> I am not talking down about that idea. I completely get it. I really do. The idea, I've already got a machine here designed to pulverize hard rock into dust and therefore I would release more gold from those clay clumps. But energy to reward is not there. If we were getting 5 or 10 grams per cubic meter and say 30% of that cubic meter fell off the back in big balls of clay, it would totally be worth setting some sort of system like this up to pulverize it because there's a lot of gold in it. But we're talking about moving a cubic meter of soil to maybe recover a gram or a gram and a half. And if 30% of that falls off the back, I am not going to spend my time and energy on bringing this out there to recover a 0.2 when I could spend the time instead, the time and energy instead of dragging this out there on digging more pay dirt to go through the machine. Every single system has loss. This dry washer has loss. That high banker, the little multi sluice, has mad loss. The big high banker has loss. That $8,000 piece of metal detecting equipment has limits on its ability to find gold. In my opinion, you're better off not trying to obtain perfection because you're never going to obtain perfection. And if you do, it will be fleeting and momentary because the state, the environment that you're in constantly changes. Just on a day river sluicing, you can actively see the water levels going up and down. That changes the velocity in your sluice box. It changes constantly. And therefore, any perfection that you do obtain is going to have to change with those changes. I would much rather get it good enough. A 90% recovery rate for whatever goes over the riffle tray is a-okay with me. And 
I know that investing the energy that I have in my body, because you only have a certain amount of energy every day. I know, I know that there are like super manly men who'll be like, oh, I can get out there and I can dig all day and you're an absolute pussy. You can't do what I do. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> For me, I have a limited amount of energy and I'm going to utilize that in digging the best spot I can find in that area and I'm going to maximize the amount of dirt that I can run from that rich area. And I am going to clearly define it so I don't waste energy on lower grade pay dirt until I have to. Once that main streaks out and I still got energy, I may consider digging some more dirt from the lower grade areas. But I might, I might try to dig more dirt than worry about processing the little bit that falls off the back. If there was an efficient way of doing it, I would do it, but there isn't. There's no efficient way that I can see would benefit me in doing. Sure, there are ways of breaking up the clay balls. There are ways of breaking up the dirt. But ultimately, like I said, if it took me an hour to break up the clay balls to run a third of, the, a, third of a meter and recover a point two, in that same hour, if I could run half a meter of pay dirt, I'm going to recover more gold running that half meter of pay dirt. Uh, what's the saying that comes from Warhammer? Uh, the least amount of energy and effort to inflict the most amount of damage? Well, in prospecting, it's the least amount of energy and effort to recover the most amount of gold. Because the more often you do that, the more gold you're going to get.